everybody, Andrew Zimmern here, Instagram Live, AZ Cooks. Thank you to the good folks at Shun Cutlery and to Florida Kanye Rum, our wonderful sponsors. This is a dish that we have wanted to make for a long time for you. I've, I've put it, the finished version has been on my Instagram. Uh, the sizzling squash has gotten hundreds of thousands of people salivating. Um, and, you know, once again, this is, this is the stuff that I actually cook on demand uh, for me and my kid, guests when they come over. It's the, one of the simplest pasta dishes that I know how to make. And yet, it's... It's one that we've never uh, shown you on the on the program how to how to design for yourself, um, and no better time of year to be doing it than right now. The last of the gold bar squash from summer is in the marketplace, uh, but no matter because gold bar squash, other types of crookneck squash, summer squash, zucchini stuff like that uh, are available uh, now year round. Um, in the northern climates, and you know, if you live in the southern half of the United States, nine months of the year, you have beautiful fresh squash uh, like this. First thing that I want to do uh, is cook the pasta. Um, I'm going to do these. They're called pakeri. Um, I like to use pasta that comes from Gragnano, that is made in bronze dyes where it has rough edges. Uh, using organic flour, um, and I'm just going to dump some pasta into rapidly boiling salted water, let it wait for mm, 30 seconds, 45 seconds. It returns to a boil. I give it one stir, uh, and then we're going to drain it. Um, I am going to put half a stick of butter into my pan, cut this end off, and I make slices. I don't know, it's like a third of an inch. And I let that butter brown right away. Now, why do I let it brown right away? Well, there's so much moisture in these slices of squash. I'm really not too concerned about it. Um, you know, I like squash that are fairly narrow. This is about as big as I'll use for gold bar. I find they get a little starchy after that. Again, take the tip off that has the flour end. Third of an inch. Um, I've always cut it that way. I have found it's super easy to control uh, the heat. It also means that I can cook them one side only if need be. Stop. Give your pasta one good swish. Nothing will stick. And you get all that starch out into the water, which is a very important part of pasta cookery, uh, both for the tenderness of the pasta itself, but most importantly, if you're using pasta water. We've got two more of these. Um, I think that'll be excellent for this batch. Um, when I am making bigger batches of this, I the, the recipe calls for uh, double all the ingredients, enough to feed four to six people uh, as an entree, as part of a larger meal that we have a salad, maybe some other goodies, uh, lunch. I mean, you eat as much pasta as you like. Everybody does it uh, slightly differently. Um, I'm making a sort of a half batch here, maybe a two thirds batch. Um, simply because uh, of size of what's going on. Uh, if this was my biggest pan, uh, I'd cook the whole pound of pasta off and let it hold there, and I would do this twice. Don't crowd the pan. You want all of that squash to have contact with the heat source. And you want to salt it, because we're trying to brown this. Brown butter, brown squash. And we salt this fairly well. I want to cook my shallot on top of there. Some of that will brown when it gets flipped. Some will brown as it slides through because I'm always going to be doing a lot of this. But that brown butter are those milk solids that are in the butter that are actually turning color. They are caramelizing. There are sugars in milk solids. There's sugar in milk, right? There is sugar in milk, naturally occurring sugar. 
uh, not added sugar, naturally occurring sugar. So it actually browns, caramelizes. There is water in butter. Depending on how good your butter is, it can be sometimes 7% butter, right? Uh, 8%. So that's what's evaporating here. That's what that sizzle is, and I just want to make sure that I hard sear, get a nice brown color on all of that uh, squash. Now, I'm going to have a lemon here. I am going to season this with lemon and lots of Parmesan cheese. So I just squeeze that out. I'm going to throw my thyme in there. I love the flavor of thyme there. If you don't have thyme, just omit it. I'm gonna throw some parsley leaves in there. If you don't have parsley, just omit it. I'm gonna save the rest of the parsley for when I plate this. And I'm using whole leaves. I'm not even gonna bother to cut it up. I have a little more butter here if I need more in my sauce. But what my sauce is going to be comprised of is all the juices here in the pan and this stuff, pasta water. So frequently what I tell people is at home, if I'm draining pasta in a colander, in the sink, rather than try to put something underneath the pasta and I boil my hands, or, you know, right, just take a measure any kind, it could be a coffee cup, and just dip it into the water right before you drain it, and you'll have enough pasta water to do whatever you like with your sauce. Um, as it is, I'm using a little TV trick, and quite frankly, with small pots of pasta, when I'm making pasta just for myself or just me and the kid, um, I sometimes won't even drain there. I'll keep everything in front of me. I'll drain a small pot right here in the bowl. I have pasta water at the ready, and then I can just dump this out. Um, I am moving this around just to make sure that we're nice, that everything's free and easy, nothing is sticking. And I want to show you that. That's what we have in that pan. So all I want to do is start to turn some of these. They're all going to be different color. It doesn't really matter. Don't get into analysis paralysis. If you have that nut brown, sizzling, brown butter vibe going on in there, you are good. And I'll show you a little trick once we have flipped these. The ones that are bald, that were on the outside, we can move to the center. And yes, I am doing this one by one, just easier for me. Some people use a spatula or an offset of some kind. Uh, that's fine. Everybody has their own. Oh, I already did that one. Everybody has their own methodology. Go with what you're comfortable with. And now all I do is pull the dark ones out to the edge push where are some, some of these balder ones that were on the edge into the middle, right? Super, super simple. Now, squash like this, we don't want it to burn. We don't want the shallots to burn. We don't want the parsley or the thyme to burn. And it's already cooked all the way through. Right now, we're just gilding the lily. So at this point, and this is why I love cutting that a third of an inch and cooking it over high heat, we test our pasta. Almost. Almost. What stops this from burning? More butter, lemon juice, oh well, someone's going to get a seed. A 
little bit of pasta water. Our pasta is now ready to go in there. By the way, that's a very effective way of dealing with this. Let the pasta finish cooking in there with the fresh butter, that liquid that's evaporating. But we have stopped all caramelization because we have added water into that, right? All caramelization has stopped. And now, Madeline, would you pass me a plate? All I want to do is I want that lemon and pasta. Look at that color of that sauce and how thick and yummy that is. Just absolutely, absolutely stunning and delicious. We're going to turn that off. I'm going to grate my pasta. Now, if I was using a fine pasta and a fine vegetable, I would use a fine hole for my parm. But that's not what I'm doing. Really good parm melts. We have big, thick pieces of pakeri. We have big pieces of squash. Just toss it a couple of times. Season it again fresh pepper at the end. I don't put black pepper in while it's cooking because I don't want to scorch it and turn it bitter, but you want black pepper with this. And then you can put that out family style for everyone. And because this sauce is just the butter, the juices from the vegetables, the pasta water, it's kind of a strong sauce, actually, when you think about it. But you want every drop of it. This is, I don't know, if I had to eat one pasta dish, uh, well, I'd have a hard time choosing. Oh, shush. A little fresh green. And then maybe... And I'll put cheese at the table. Maybe a little bit of extra parm just on top there because that's the sauce, right? Stop blinking and making noises at me. Um, this is that dish that your family, I promise you, will request over and over and over again. I mean, come on. I can't even begin to tell you what a vegetable converter for kids this dish is. You put this in front of any five-year-old that hates vegetables, and they will scarf it all down. You will be amazed. Moms and dads, this is your ticket to getting your kids to eat vegetables. Uh, young folks, my nickname for this well, why am, I, why am I biased against the older folks of my generation? If you need to make someone on a second or third date reel them in pasta, this is your go-to. I promise you. This is the pasta that changes lives. There you have it. Questions, comments, criticisms? We have time for a couple of your thoughts. What's the trick to perfectly cooked pasta? Um, rapidly boiling large volume of salted water relative to what you're cooking. You don't need huge, huge pots of water. You actually want a little bit of starch in your water because you want to use the, the starches that are in the water, but you want enough water volume so that the starches go out and the pasta is not reabsorbing muddy water. Um, so, I mean, I had two or two and a half quarts in there for half pound of pasta. I could have put a whole pound in there. Two and a half, three quarts is plenty to cook a pound of pasta. Um, really go to al dente. Not raw or crunchy.
crunchy, but al dente, because there is thermal momentum in pasta. It does continue to absorb water. Your pasta should always be tossed in the sauce it's cooked with. And so when I tasted it, I, I knew from experience that it only needed another 30, 45 seconds in there to sort of be perfect, but I also was pulling it at a time where I knew it would keep cooking for another minute or two afterwards, if that makes sense. Um, and get to know your shapes. Um, I, I don't play golf. Uh, I play disc golf. And one of the things that they teach newcomers in golf is play an entire round with one club, right? Just something that goes straight in 100 feet and your putter, right? Just get used to hitting straight and in the middle of the fairway with one club. And I always tell people with as many pasta shapes that are out there, you know, you, forget what the recipe says. Make the same dish or make eight different dishes all using penne. You know, get used to that brand. And by the way, I do buy the imported brands from Gustiamo. They are not a sponsor. I don't have a financial relationship with them. They just import uh, Faella and Martelli, my two favorite brands of Italian pasta from Grignano. So uh, that's, what I, that's what I like. Simple and easy. If you could name a pasta shape, what would you name it? Oh, good one. Well, that guy just invented one uh, before, right, uh, earlier this year, and got, he'd been working on it for three years. Um, it, would, uh, it would take me about five seconds. Uh, mine would be uh, suspensoria. Uh, it would be a pasta um, whose natural shape hides some kind of surprising flavor, so the suspense at the table would be unbearable for the diners. I love that. Mm, it's a good one. If you had to commit to one existing pasta shape for the rest of your life, what would it be? <laughs> you evil temptress. <laughs> uh, one existing pasta shape for the rest of my life. It would have to be something large format with big holes in it so I could use it for a lot of things. I mean, I'll just go with like rigatoni, uh, you know, may maybe a, uh, those giant ring diamonds. Yeah, uh, I'd go with something like rigatoni, or the peccari actually is really great. You know, it, it, it flattens out, it can work with all kinds of different things. Uh, yeah. What else you got? Would you add any other vegetables to this? Oh, you can. All the, I mean, look, I've done this and then at the last minute put in some peas and stuff like that. I just love the simplicity of it. I happen to be a huge fan of gold bar squash, uh, and I'm a huge fan of zucchini. And everyone is saying, well, there's such mild flavors. Yeah, but if you showcase it in a dish and you don't put a lot of other stuff in it, just the thyme, the parsley, the cheese, the lemon, the butter, and the noodles accent that you taste that squash in there. And so it's a great way to honor. By the way, this is very inexpensive, super delicious, yummy for you. You can go half again as much vegetable and half again as less pasta if you want to be lower carb and higher veg. Um, I just love the way this honors the humble uh, gold bar squash. And you could do it with zucchini. You can do it with uh, eggplant doesn't work so well because eggplants are sponges. But you can do it with a lot of different types of summer squash, crookneck, etc. How long is gold bar squash in season? Uh, well, in some places it's in season for eight or nine months. Depends what part of the uh, United States you're in, when you're planting it, how many uh, harvests you get, right? I mean, there are farms out in California that I order from that are growing and planting and harvesting uh, summer squash varietals uh, nine months a year. Chef's Garden in Huron, Ohio. Uh, my buddy Lee Jones, I think you can get uh, small yellow and green squash from him 12 months a year. That's cool. It is cool, isn't it, Emily? <laughs> that was more of a comment than a question. Oh, really? Yeah. Emily just went from being my favorite person in the office to somewhere in the middle. Oh. It can happen so quickly. <laughs> I'm ah, kidding, just Emily. Like that. We adore you. Okay. So I'm still the favorite, right? Still. Okay, good. <laughs> um, what other kinds of cheeses could you toss on this pasta? <laughs> uh, anything. Complete opposite. Uh, I'm really picky about it. It's actually a great question. If you put chev or other creamy cheeses on it, problem. Feta, too salty. Uh, pecorino romano or pecorino sardo, definitely too salty. It overwhelms the gentle flavor of this. This is a Parmesan 
uh, cheese. The only other cheese that I have served this with is uh, cotilla, which is often nicknamed the Mexican Parmesan cheese. It's much different. It's it's wetter than parm. It's uh, crumblier than parm, but it is dry and it is lightly salted, and it actually plays very well uh, with this dish. Um, this has been amazing. Um, thank you for being patient with us. You know, I'm on the road uh, making TV right now, which is why you're watching a special presentation of Instagram Live, which isn't live, but we're dropping it live, so we still get to use the same name. See how we're splitting airs? Um, so we appreciate your patience. We want to make sure that we're able to bring you new recipes every single week, hence the pre-taping of this. Thanks to our sponsors, the folks at Shun Cutlery and the good people at uh, Florida Cana Rum, the world's most sustainable rum, and uh, to obviously to Abby and Emily and Madeline, without whom uh, this show would not be possible. And to all of you, please be kind to each other, and we will see you next week with another edition, another recipe, more questions, more hijinks. Who knows how many swear words I'll use. Uh, it's always a, a crapshoot on that issue. Be good to each other. See you later. <laughs>